Good morning. My name is Raj Chawla. I'm the president of the city council. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Marked a significant milestone in our community's development. Um, it's my privilege to express our deep gratitude to all those who have been instrumental in bringing this long-awaiting Crescent Connector project to fruition. Um, this project has been a labor of dedication, collaboration, and perseverance, spanning three construction seasons and over a decade of planning and design. I also want to express our profound appreciation to the business owners and residents of Essex Junction impacted by construction for their support, patience, and understanding during the construction period. It's important to note that this project is funded almost entirely by Federal Highway Administration and VTRANS money. This is a $16 million project, and the city's portion was about a little over $100,000. The city is very grateful for the support. Given that, I'd like to thank and acknowledge our federal and state guests here today. Tom Renner was uh, representative of the Balance Office. Ryan McLaren was Senator Welch's office. Ethan Hinch was Senator Sanders' office. Our representatives, Lori Houghton and Karen Dolan. Thank you all for joining us. Senator Chittenden is here, South Burlington. Thank you very much. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Ethan Hinch uh, with, Secretary, uh, with Senator Sanders' office to say a few words. Good morning. My name's Ethan Hinch. I'm an outreach representative for Senator Bernie Sanders. I know the Senator would have liked to be here in person today, but I thank you for the opportunity to offer a few remarks on his behalf. First, congratulations to Essex Junction on this ribbon cutting for the Crescent Connector Roadway Project to improve traffic flow in one of our state's busiest intersections. It's no secret that our nation's infrastructure is in poor shape and that until recently, the federal government has chronically underfunded its repair. Our economy, and just importantly our people, rely on well-functioning infrastructure. Without it, towns and cities can't attract businesses, people can't get to work, municipalities can't deliver safe drinking water. As you all know too well, many communities cannot afford to make these much needed upgrades on their own. As a former mayor, Bernie understands these challenges and he's long been committed to securing federal funding to make these kinds of necessary upgrades. That's why he was pleased to support the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which is bringing billions of dollars into our state for projects like this one that improve our transportation system and other infrastructure. Thank you for having me today. On behalf of Bernie, congratulations to Essex Junction on this important milestone. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. So there's going to be a lot of thank yous today. So please bear with us. There are many organizations and individuals to thank for their roles in this effort. I'd like to thank former village trustees, former city councilors and current city councilors for their support. Um, Peter Gustafson, Deb Billadu, John Leza, Steve Atwood, Mary Morris, Lori Houghton, Andrew Brown, Dan Karen, George Tyler, Amber Tebow, Marcus Serta, and Elaine Haney. Also our former and cur current planning commission members, Aaron Martin, Nick Meyer, John Alden, Dan Karen, Liz Kilcoyne, Andrew Booten, Dave Nistico, Diane Clemens, Elena Judicious, Elijah Massey, Scott McCormick, and Christy Pascal. Thank you all. Now I'd like to thank those who are on the ground on behalf of the city. Rick Jones, Public Works Superintendent. Where's Rick? Hiding. <laughs> there he is. For helping to address issues and challenges along the way. I'd also like to thank Rick Hamlin and Rachel Tobler from Donald L. Hamlin Consulting Engineers for local problem project management, problem management, and resident engineering services. Their management on this project, which included daily emails that kept the community informed on the next steps was greatly appreciated. Now I'd like to welcome Rick Hamlin to the podium to say a few words and thank those directly involved. Thank you, Raj. I have the honor to thank the organizations and individuals for their unwavering assistance and hard work through this endeavor. 
This project would not have been possible without these individuals and these organizations. A lot of moving parts on this project over a three year period. Um, and it took a big team of a many, many people doing many diverse tasks to get this project completed. I'd like to thank Jeff Arango and Robin Pierce, former community development directors who conceptualized and brought this idea to fruition. Without the concept, it wouldn't have happened. Every project starts with an idea and their idea was the, the match that lit the fire that put this project forward and got us going. Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission team for managing the initial scoping studies environmental assessment to get us headed in the right direction. Charlie Baker, Laney Churchill are here from CCRPC. Thank you. Resource Systems Group for the final scoping report, which was prepared in 2011. Let's think about that, 2011. Ken Roby, Dubois and King for the environmental assessment, right of way and design services. So Ken is here along with Brian Breslin key members of the team for the design. And that's, that's a very simple and short statement. The design of the project, the plan sheets, there's 200, over 200 plan sheets. And the, the specification of the documents are probably in the six or 800 page range. It's a huge, huge project design that they pulled together. Corey Mack from Wall Consultant Group for Traffic Signal Design Services. And I don't have to tell you, we've got five corner signals, two new signals. That's a big, big lift. Well done, Corey. Project manager, Andy DeForge from VTrans, who has helped us every step of the way through the past 13 years. So we were just talking about this. There are three people essentially who have been on the project nonstop since the beginning. Andy DeForge and Rick Jones are two of those folks. Um, thank you very much, Andy. Couldn't have done it without you. Dan Vosian and Randy Bunt Bentledge. Yeah, big, big hands for Andy. Dan Vosian and Rudy Bentledge from Stone Environmental for the preparation of the corrective action plan and the on-site monitoring of environmental conditions during construction. It's a key thing to keep us all, all safe. The great crew from RJ Corman who did all of the track crossing, track, and new railroad signal work in the first phase of this project, which was three construction seasons ago. Um, they, they were the first ones on the site to get the project kicked off in phase one. The incredible ECI construction team for doing a fantastic job constructing this project, including Ben Heath, Steve Lazuski, Andrew Piper, Bradley Christian, Ben Nelson, and Jaden Waterhouse. They were the key crew here every day, whether it was rainy, whether it was cold, whether it was rainy at night, whether it was windy, they were the key folks who've been here since the beginning building this project. Couldn't have done it without them. And of course, all the other ECI staff that support them who contributed to the success of this project. We'd also like to recognize the ECS, ECI subcontractors uh, who often get forgotten in uh, these type of ceremonies. Di Stefano Landscaping, Green Mountain Flaggers, Granite State Curbing, Christ Electric, l and Safety Marking, Lafayette Highway Specialties, Municipal and Contractor Services, and NICOM Coatings all were part of an important team to get this done. Thanks also go to Matt Saganowitz, Tanner Chaffee, Dave Gilbo, Peter Larson from ECI, and Brian Fleel from Econolite for helping to get the new traffic signals up and operational and communicating with the five corners and railroad signals correctly. So that's a whole project all in and of itself that all of those folks contributed to. Special thanks go to Officer Gregg, Stephen Gregg from the Essex Police Department for assisting the project whenever we asked, including guiding traffic through the five corners when the signal stopped working and for adjusting Google Maps several times as traffic routes changed. Uh, Again, a key player in this whole project. Special recognition goes to attorneys Claudine Safar and Kristen Seamus at Monaghan Safar for legal support and services throughout the entire length of this project. And, and there was a lot of service that was required. Constructing a completely new road is no small feat. Constructing a new road over an existing rail line is even more a rare occurrence. Thank you to the New England Central Railroad and Rail America for the approval to build the new crossing that's behind us here. Without it, there'd be no new roadway. We also appreciate in the cooperation and assistance from the local rail and signal operations representatives, especially Shane Bocash. Many landowners granted permission to use portions of their land to build this new roadway, and we appreciate their working with the city to make this project possible. Back to you, Raj. Thanks, Rick. Uh, with that, I'll introduce Regina Mahoney, our municipal manager. 
Hi, everybody. Uh, so I am up to speak a little bit about the future. So, um, uh, but first I want to identify a few things from this project that are super exciting. First, you're standing on some pervious, pervious pavers. Uh, we also have a sand filter stormwater system behind us. Um, these are some of the features that are really help uh, the city manage stormwater um, in a good way going forward. We've also got some EV chargers behind you, and we have some uh, bike locker boxes right here in front of us. We also have uh, a complete bike lane now from Maple Street all the way through the Five Corners intersection, which is awesome. And we've got sidewalks and bike lanes coming through uh, the new roadway. Uh, we also have, and I am not going to ask anybody on this project to pause the work that they're doing any longer. So I'm not going over there to ask them to quiet down. <laughs> um, uh, we've got, um, lost my train of thought. Pedestrian only phases on the new intersections as well. So really, really exciting, awesome features associated with this project. Um, and really what we're looking forward to going forward is the Connect the Junction project. Uh, also, a federal raise grant is supporting that, thanks to our partners at Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission for getting that grant. Uh, we are looking at our land uses and transportation improvements everywhere where we have the bus coming into the city um, and in our downtown here. So um, the folks that are running that project framework, Jeff Arango is uh, one of your former community development directors. He's here from Seattle running that project. Um, and um, they are going to do a walking tour right after this. Also at 6.30 tonight at CBE, uh, we are doing the closing presentation on the charrette that's been going with this project all weekend. So very, very exciting to be looking forward to the future. And I believe I am handing it back over to Raj. Almost to the scissors. Um, so thanks, Regina. As we stand here today, the city of Essex Junction eagerly anticipates the positive impact that this new infrastructure will have on our daily lives. Thank you once again to all who have been involved in this remarkable journey and everyone who joined us today. Together, we've laid the foundation for a more vibrant, sustainable, and inclusive future of Essex Junction. So now, <laughs> never actually done one of these yet. Please join us for a photo and ribbon cutting over here at the crosswalk. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.
Good morning. My name is Steve Lazuski. I'm a senior project engineer for Engineers Construction and a 24 year resident of the city of Essex Junction. This project is monumental in the fact that the train has been or has a history of rolling through the five corners when we have our school traffic. I was a parent that brought my kids to school every day and the train always created problems. With this new loop road, the school traffic will be able to continue to move. Um, it's, it's amazing. The traffic here in the city, especially during the school, uh, school hours is is unbelievable and this road will make a huge improvement in getting our children safely to and from school uh, my kids also rode bikes to school back and forth there wasn't always a bike lane always on maple street or on pearl street for that matter when they were growing up and with recent projects like this one the city has added bike lanes that allow our children to get to and from school safely as a parent i can't express my gratitude for the city to the city for getting this done um, on the other hand or not on the other hand with that i was out here daily building this project worked with uh, the design team the city support staff and my company and it went very smoothly we ran into challenges here and there um, but everything was completed per specification and i'm just happy to be part of this uh, How's that? Like, build, build it, housing, housing, all the stuff. Like, 